Let's take a quick peek of the front yard, see how the yard's doing. Oh, it's looking good. Starting to green up. We're hitting 80s all week this week. So I look for more green. But today's video, it's not gonna be in the yard. You see, I've already got me a cut in yesterday. This video is gonna be in the garage. So let's head to the garage. Hey guys, welcome to Sunny Bermuda. Today's episode, we're going to do some maintenance on the Alec Kensington 28. H, of course, stands for a Honda. So we're gonna do some maintenance on the Honda engine. And this is a GX120 engine. First thing you wanna do really is to get all your stuff ready. I went ahead and took my, my grass box off, my reel, or any cartridge you may have on it, and then gather your supplies. I've got my owner manual that came with it. If you don't have your owner manual that came with your machine, they're really easy to look up online. Just go to Honda's website, look at the GX120, and then you may need your serial number. And to find your serial number, it is located right here. This stamped into the block on the engine. And it starts right here, QC, CJT, and then some numbers. So that's your serial number, just in case you need it. Also, need some gloves, of course. Keep the oil off your hands. And I'm using some genuine Honda 10W30. And then a new air element in our maintenance, just in case, if you need that, you may not need it. And then of course I've got a couple of extra here. These are optional. It's just a uh, super tacky to put on your pre-filter, on your air filter here, you know, to attract dust, to keep it from passing through the pre-filter into your paper filter. And then here of course is some belt conditioner. If we want to condition our belts right here on the side. And then also, last but not least, is your oil drainer container right here. This is where we're going to dump the oil into it from the engine. Okay, now you're wondering how am I going to drain it. Next step is to identify where you can drain it. On the front of the machine, you have a, a fill reservoir here. To, this is where you put your oil in. And you also have a drainer plug right here. You can pull this plug out and then your oil will drain out but it's kind of hard to get my drainer container here because all this is on here and it's pretty big. I mean, if I had like a small cup, I could probably sit it down here. And also when you pull this off, oil will go everywhere. See if I can get a closer look everywhere, all through here and it'll run back behind here. So I'm not going to use this option. I'm going to use the back option. Okay, right here. Right here's your other option in the back. This is the rear of the mower. You have a drain plug here, then also a fill station here, identical to the front. So what I'm gonna do is take this off and the oil will drain down and into my reservoir. Okay, I have a funny story here. I drained this after the first five hours of use, like it says in the outlet manual. And what I did, I used this one and I have a, this is called a flex funnel. It will bend. It has a lid inside of this rubber, so it's really easy to bend. So I thought, you know, I'm going to lay it up here and basically hold it in place and water would run down. I mean, the oil, excuse me, the oil would run down and into my drainer container that I have down here. Well, I did that. Then this slipped, slipped, oil ran all down in there, down in there, it ran all down my, well, I guess now it's rusty looking but my roller here and oil just got everywhere. So I'm gonna to try to alleviate that in this video. First, what I'm gonna do right here, is take some painter's tape, just some simple painter's tape and get it as close to that as you can. That way to keep the oil off the machine. And then I'm gonna tape it over that. So it basically just runs down. I may use some you can use aluminum foil. I'm going to use that because this is kind of heavy for the painter's tape to hold up. Okay, what I just did is I took my, I didn't have a video camera, but I took my rag and I cleaned out around this really good and also around this. You see how clean it is compared to just a second ago. That way they get up under there and then stick to the surface of the machine.
as you can see, I'm just do, I'm just doing this. I'm probably going overboard here. I'm just doing this to keep the oil from going back under the engine block and down and around. So I basically have a seal here with tape. Because when I take this off, it's just going to run off into my drainer container here. I think I'm going to put some piece of aluminum foil here, tape it there. That way, it just run down the foil. And this. There we go, guys. I got my little my little slide built out of aluminum foil. Tape this up here. So now I take this plug out first. Let's take this out. Get a little pressure on the in the oil. I'll let air into the system. Sit it down here along with the cap. Make sure that's open so the oil runs down into that. And this is a Honda engine, so therefore it's a 10 millimeter socket. So I've got my DeWalt 10 millimeter socket here. It doesn't matter what kind it is. Put it on, we'll back it out. First, put my gloves on. A couple other tips. You may want to twist your height adjuster over here, put it on the highest setting. That way you have kind of a, a tilt back because you want the oil to run out the engine this way. That way the front tends up just a little bit. Put the ring back out. Now I'm gonna also run the engine. I ran it for about five minutes, you know, get it good and warm to the touch because warm because warm oil really flows and it'll empty out. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. There we go. It broke there. All right, now it should come out pretty easy. I'll just do it by hand now. Yeah, see how easy it backs out with just my hand. And hope this works. Yeah. There we go. Make sure it's curved up. Here it comes. Uh-oh, uh-oh. There we go. Fold up the side there. And now you can see it flowing down. Into the teeth, uh-oh. Let's fold it up here. Nice little path for it to run down into the reservoir here. You can take this to any car dealership or any you know oil changing place and they'll recycle this for you. While that's flowing, let me come up here release this as well on the front that way air is getting in it don't have to I don't think but and I'll clean this up and see the see the dirt around it make sure we get that good and clean see the dirt it's all around the insides and part of the maintenance program we are going to wash it real good probably give it a good polish take care of things Starting to slow down now. Just gonna give it a good tilt all the way back, and there it comes. Let's get all of it out. Looks like it's empty. Blowing out the hole anymore. I've got it tilted up to at a 45 degree angle, so it should be fairly empty. Now, what I'm going to do is basically just peel this off and put in a new contraption here I found online that to prevent all of this, we're going to use a little thing called I believe it's called drains it. Let's see, it drains it right here. Drains it. Okay, well, what this is going to do is it's going to go in there. It's just going to sit there, and then next time I oil change, all I got to do is pull this out. And look, I have a nice hose, just like on my snapper there, that black hose I had on it. If you saw my previous video on doing maintenance on a zero turn, I'll leave a link up here. But I'm going to have this on here. So let's get this cleaned up. I 
that did a really good job of keeping it clean. <laughs> Wish I'd done that the first time last summer. See there, look how clean that is. Perfect. Okay, now I'm going to screw this in. And keep in mind, this is a Honda engine. This, so this is a 10 millimeter connector here, or the hole here, that's 10 millimeter. So this needs to be 10 millimeter to match it. Right here, you see this? So I think Briggs and Stratton, they have drains it has one for Briggs and Stratton as well. I believe it's 12 millimeter, I'm not sure, but you know, double check your engine. And if you do decide to get a drains it on your machine, you know, make sure you get the right one. See how easy that went on. Oh, this is gonna be so nice in the future. I don't have to do all this mess, it'll be a quick oil change. That was a 10 millimeter, and use a 13 millimeter to tighten this up. I should have showed you before I put this on, but it has a little, it had a little rubber gasket on the inside of it, and then a washer. So it, see, you see it flushes perfect, it fits flush. Right there. There you go, tighten this. Don't wanna over tighten it. Now make sure this is tight. Don't want to put engine oil in it and this actually be loose and your oil runs out. All right, let's push this back down. Just kind of snug it in there. And this holds on right there. There. Now, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it's, at least it's functional. You see this little red thing hanging out in my videos now when you see me pushing around my outlet. But next time I get ready to change the oil, simply pull this out. Unplug this, put it in my drainer container, and the oil will drain out. So easy. So now we'll put the, get that ready. We'll put these, get my funnel, and we'll put, I believe it calls for 18 ounces of oil in it. So I'll get my Honda oil and we'll fill these up. Believe it or not, that's the only oil that was spilt. And that was my fault because I left this hanging over the edge of my drainer container and it just simply spilled on the floor. So, thanks, it's on cardboard. Got that cleaned up. We'll set it over here. All right, and also, I put my cap on back over here. I never took that one off. And also I got my little leveler. Make sure the mower, the surface that the engine is mounted to is completely level. So I start filling it up over here. Perfect. So I'm over here and grab my oil. And the manual says that this GX120 requires 18 ounces of oil. So we'll put one full container, because each container is 12 ounces. And then we'll put six ounces of this, so half of this. And then we'll save half this half for the next time as it requires one and a half. Too bad they don't come in 18 ounces bottles. That would have made it easier. Also, you fill it up so that the oil is right there at the bottom of the threads. So I'll show you that in a minute. Let's get to feeling. Ah, oh, this is open. I've got, I thought this felt lighter. This is actual, actually the six ounces left over from the last time I did it. So put 12 plus six, 18 ounces. Okay, I put 12 ounces in. Not sure if you could call this on camera, but I would put a little bit in, let it run down and settle. Cause if you like dump the entire 12 ounces in your funnel as fast as possible, then it will basically back backfill on you and come out and, and spill. So now we're gonna put in the remainder six. And you can see the oil, I'm not sure. It might be a little too dark, but you can kind of see the oil down there. And the six ounces will bring it up to the just the bottom of the thread marks. See if you can see this right here. This actually shows you a good example of the oil level. You see at the engine level, when it's full, it will come to the bottom of the threads on either side. So we're on the back side. So the oil will come to the bottom of the threads on the oil level dipstick here.
perfect. You can see the oil, it's actually right there at the bottom. Got 18 ounces in, it may be up just a couple of threads, so that's perfect. So we'll go ahead and put our cap back on. And it's sitting over here on the drainer container right here. And we've already cleaned it and we cleaned the surface around it. We don't want any debris to get in. And just simply tighten it up. Okay, and now we're all done. The engine, the oil in the engine has been changed. So next, let's move on to the, first let's clean this up. I'll take me a minute and I'll clean this up. Here's a quick tip, always store your oil funnel. I identified it, let's see, it's spilled oil on it. And also put the little cap I replaced in it. You see there's a little oil in the bag. This keeps from making a mess. And also it's quickly defined next time you change your oil. Something else. I got questions a lot is, what is this? How do I have all my real, my different cartridges on the wall? They are simply little hooks, cobalt hooks from Lowe's. They're like $6.99 or $5.99 a piece. Just mounted those on the walls. And they're perfect for hanging them up. And another popular question is, where did I get this for my steel combi system? It's right here. This is called the combi keeper. And I'll put the text right here is combi, which is the name of the, I guess the line of the attachable stuff for steel, combi, and then keeper. And basically it'll store four, four of the items. This one doesn't fit too good. So I had to have this rubber on here to keep it from you know, falling out because the blower is kind of odd shaped. But yeah, that's the combi keeper. Next thing we're going to do is check the air filter. Okay. The maintenance schedule, it's really great in the Honda service manual. You'll see the air cleaner here. Check it after at each use, clean it every three months or 50 hours, and then replace it basically every 300 hours or every year. Now, I replaced mine last year toward the end of the season, so it should be, should be fine, but we will see because we have entered a lot of dusty conditions. You know, Scarify, and when you Scarify, you really stir up a lot of dust. Same with Romo and this Bermuda, especially the uh, dormant Bermuda. It will throw up all kind of dust. Oh yeah, Woo. See, that's dirty. We have to clean that. Thank goodness for that pre-filter, which when I replaced it last year, I did put a little oil on it and I'll show you that in just a minute. So we'll take this off and we'll go clean it. Look at that layer, see if you can see that. See the clean inside and then the dirty outside. That's pretty wild. But, what you do that's why you put the oil on it or the tack let's see if i can pull this it's kind of hard to do one-handed so we'll pull that off all right and you can see the oil, the filter the paper filter is actually very clean so i'm going to take my something and blow all this mess out then i'll take this and really clean it really good basically you can use dishwashing soap to clean this because all this is is foam dishwashing soap's the best because it does have a little, you know, film of oil on it. First, we'll shake it out. Just take it outside. Let's hold it out here in the sun. There we go. Ooh, can you see that? You can see it's fairly clean. Just shaking it off good. But yeah, some good old dish soap. It'll really get in that foam and clean it really good. Okay, while the pre-filter is drying out in the sun, we're going to start and we're going to clean the sediment cup, which is just below the air filter. Come down here. That's the sediment cup right here. You won't, you won't do this yearly. Basically, this is your drain screw to drain the gasoline off because this gas is here. So make sure you turn off the gas right here. You see gas on forward. We'll pull it off. Also have the spark plug cover removed right here. Took that off the spark plug. So I'm going to take a screwdriver, loosen that. If there's any gas in it, it'll drain. And then I'm going to loosen this bolt. It's a 10 millimeter bolt. And we'll loosen that and it'll pull it out. Under the 
sediment cup was. It was really clean. I even took this little pin out. You can slide this pin out. This, this filter will come off. And again, it was really clean. But there's also an O-ring here. It, it recommends replacing it often. Well, I do it probably every other year. But it looks like it's in pretty good condition. So I'm just gonna put the sediment cup back on. It's really clean. an easy check again that was clean now we'll move on to the next in some countries you'll have a what's called a spark arrester it's on your muffler here so if you're in Europe or some other countries we're in the USA here we don't have a spark arrester but if you do you remove this basically this muffler cover this piece here take these both off and then the spark arrester would slide out and it's basically a filter for the muffler and then you would clean it with a wire brush and some solvent but we don't have that on this model, so I'm going to skip that step. All right, I got the air filter area cleaned up really good. So let's go ahead and put it back together. Take these two, I put these two nuts up here to, so I wouldn't lose them. Take these off. We'll put our, you see the little notch in it? It goes back on. So that, that little notch sits right there. And also there is a rubber gasket it's the same on both sides so we'll put that on this glass down like that and then your air filter it goes on it sits on top of that rubber gasket and what it does it creates a seal on the bottom and then the silver screw goes on first and it tighten down your air filter this is a paper filter so I took it and kind of blew it out but it's it really clean because the pre-filter really did a good job at catching all the debris before it got to the main filter also wipe this off next thing you want to do is check your spark plug replace it if needed I'm probably not going to replace this because I don't have one on hand but I'm just going to take it out and check it I use a 13 16 spark plug If you have the spark plug gap tool, you might want to check the gap on it for the owner's manual for the uh, Honda. There we go. It doesn't look too bad. It's got a little burnt on the end of it. So I may order a new one just to replace it. Or you can take this and clean it up with a little wire brush and some solvent, which I'll probably do that real quick. Okay, as you can see, I cleaned up really good. I basically just put a little solvent on it, a little wire brush, take off the black singes. Tighten it down. It's probably the quickest maintenance thing to do on the, this mower. Just change the spark plug. Just do it snug. Don't over tighten it. Okay, this the pre-filter is dry. Look how clean it is. Let's see, hold it in the sun here. See how clean it is. Now we're just going to spray it down with some of this the PJ1 uh, oil treatment spray. Try and do this one-handed. I got everything put on. Now we're just going to put the pre-filter back on. Make sure it goes all the way down. Covers the entire filter, all the way around the tops and the bottom. Then we'll put our top back on. Now we're done. We'll just put our spark plug back on. And we are just complete. Maintenance on the Alec Kensington 28. There are other maintenance procedures you could do a little more advanced like the uh, combustion chamber cleaning it the fuel tank and filter and then the fuel tube it says like every two years you know these more advanced we won't cover that in this video because i don't think it's really needed another tip is to get a tachometer and what you could do see i've got 44 hours on this since my last maintenance 
and that's recommended every 50 hours for one year. So right around perfect timing to do this video. And got that on, most important thing. That way future oil changes will be super easy. One quick tip, it, it's, not, it's not in the uh, owner's manual, but one quick tip is to take care of your belts. So I'm gonna put some belt conditioner on these belts. What it does, it, it'll extend the life of them, keep them from cracking and splitting and getting worn. And what I'm gonna use for this is the uh, product called, from Gunk, called belt conditioner. And the way you do that is you just spray it on the belt, let it soak in. And the instructions actually say to spray it down here in the pulleys and then run the system, you know, that way it just slings it all over the pulleys. I mean, all over the belts as they run through the pulleys and basically gets, you know, good contact to the belt and lets the, the belt soak it in. So that's just a quick tip. Well, the last thing I'm going to do is give it a bath. Wash it off real good. It's not really too terribly dirty. See down here, it's got a little, little dust on it. See the dust from the, you know, from scare pine. You know, it throws dust everywhere. But I'm just going to give it a little bath, wipe off the dust, get it all nice and clean, crank it up, you know, let the oil run through the engine, good, get a little heated, then check the oil again, make sure it didn't drop or anything, but I'm pretty sure it's right on 18 ounces, which is what the manual calls for. So let's go clean it up. I won't show you guys washing my mower, but I'll show you, you know, the end result. All right, guys, got it all cleaned up. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We did a lot. We did uh, some just some routine maintenance on it. Change the oil. Put this easy drain on it right here. That way, next time we get ready to drain the oil, we don't have to worry about oil dripping all over the place. Change the air filter. Did a few things. Check the spark plug. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Be sure and subscribe. See you guys in the next one. Hopefully it'll be in the yard.